Welcome to Planet Microcap. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and joining me today is Ingo Mueller. He is the CEO of AgriForce Growing Systems. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is AGRI on NASDAQ. Ingo, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Thanks, uh, Robert, for having me again. Absolutely. So last time we actually chatted, um, we uh, did an interview on the due diligence series uh, for the Planet Microcap podcast, where we really dug into the story uh, quite more. Uh, so I invite everybody listening or watching this right now, you know, this is one of our shorter form interviews. So if you want to hear the full story of AgriForce, I would invite you to go and check out that interview. But today I wanted to get an update because the company has announced a bit of news since we published that on December 20th, 2022. So Ingo, let's dig right in. The company has put out all these press releases. Tell me about a few of the news and what and what this means for the company. Yeah, I think, you know, I when we last talked, Robert, we talked about sort of our solution side of the business. That was more of the focus. Um, today, through uh, our last announcements on Unthink and nutritional value and then bury people, that's very much focused on our brand side of the business. And, and so maybe I'll, I'll give a little more sort of overview and color and contextualize the fit. So as we talked about, we have two sides of our business, solution side and the brand side, two, a two-legged stool. Solutions is focused around technologies, know-how, innovation that's driving sustainable production of food and plant-based products, okay? So it's all about how you produce, how you grow, how you produce more sustainably, and ultimately produce things that are more nutritious for you. On the brand side, it's really levering that intellectual property and know-how and driving consumer-facing products to consumers, so providing them with more sustainably produced and better for you, as we like to say, better for you plants and foods. So Unthink, we think, epitomizes how companies or food companies can use IP, in this case, patented technology, to give consumers more of what they're looking after. And, and this is in the staple products. So when you think about wheat-based products, which is our initial focus, we've just launched Awakened Flour. And we put out some news recently about nutritional value of awakened flour in comparison to traditional flour. So you've got massive improvements in protein, uh, fiber content, and more importantly, I think for many consumers, a, a significant reduction in starch, or in this case, you know, carbs. So you're you're now able to have bread or or wheat-based products that are better for you and don't have empty calories, but actually deliver nutritional value to you. And at the same time, they taste and feel like your traditional breads um, or big products, which is pretty astonishing. So, you know, our focus now is to really drive that consumer facing um, side of our business through Unthink. And when we think about berry people, it's very much the same, a little bit of a different angle, but think of it from this perspective. What do people look for? They're looking for nutrition. Berries are incredibly high form of nutritional value. So within the berry context, we have an ability now to, to uh, have a company that delivers an integrated um, uh, offering of berries, not just a single berry, but blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries all through one distribution channel. And those two actually complement each other. So when we think about consumer access through grocers or doors, as we like to say, there is that overlap. And, uh, and then we think a step further and we look back and think, okay, how does this apply to our solution side of the business? Well, when we think about Delphi's know-how with respect to their soft fruit center and the innovation that they're carrying on through growing in controlled environments, using new hybrid genetics and stuff, you have something that really complements what Berry People is doing, which is really to start looking at farming itself, working with farmers in South America and California and Canada to really deliver longer lasting berries, better tasting berries, and of course, higher nutritional value. So everything sort of coalesces, and this is a good example now of the other side of our business and how we see the execution there. Absolutely. So let's dig into this morning's announcement. We're actually we're recording this on a Tuesday, January 24th. You just announced the binding letter of intent to acquire Berry People, about 70% of the business, right? If I'm correct, to start. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, this is a big deal for the company, right? I mean, this is a $28 million yeah. deal. As of today, the company's trading at about, about 20, 21 million market cap. You know, I, it's a letter of intent. So tell us the likelihood of this closing and also how this deal came together. Yeah, so it's it's actually been something that's been uh, in discussion for a long period of time. Um, we really liked what Barry People was doing from a business model perspective, how they were looking at the, the entire segment. And the Barry segment is a massive, massive market dominated by Driscoll's effectively. But there is a real, we felt, a really um, a unique opportunity to lever, like I said, farming tech IP or know-how. Um, and, and utilize what they are doing from a distribution perspective that was very complementary to what we were trying to do with Unthink. And so we started the process May of last year um, and have spent a lot of time working with management to align sort of strategy and growth opportunities. We think the business will grow very quickly. Um, in fact, you know, next year we expect to see a significant increase, or this year, a significant increase in their revenue in EBITDA uh, as they deploy more supply from more farms in South America. So we're, uh, we're very excited about it. And uh, when we think about uh, certainty, I mean, of course, nothing's for certain in this world, certainly, but, you know, it's a binding LOI. So all of the key commercial uh, and financial elements have been negotiated. Now it's really about just doing that final level of due diligence around updated financial information and turning that into a definitive. So it's actually most of the heavy lifting has been done. And that's why it's been ongoing since May of last year. So very good. And and upon closing, I mean, you know, when do you expect this to, you know, now recognize on on uh, on income statement, all, all that jazz that I'm sure everyone's probably been asking you once you've. Uh, yeah, you've I mean, it, it's a bit of a moving target because it yeah. takes some time to work through it. Sure. But if we think about when we'd like to have it done, we're sort of thinking April, uh, okay. late April as a reasonable time frame. But again, there are things that may uh, may or may not arise that may drag that out a bit. But that, that's notionally sort of a, what we're targeting. Got it. I mean, what's the, what, you know, I apologize that I don't have the company's balance sheet in front of me right now, but I mean, how much cash do you have in the coffers to do, you know, deals like this on an ongoing basis? And then, you know, cause then you got to integrate it. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a heavy lift. It is. Um, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a situation where we don't have the capital currently. However, we're working with our bankers, B Riley, to structure uh, financing around this particular transaction. We're using our own equity, so shares, as part of the consideration to reduce the amount of cash that's required. Um, and we think, you know, how we look at it just generally when we look at m and is we look for businesses where we think there's a 50 to 100% accretive lift in the value, ideally 100%, sometimes it's less depending on what's going on in the market. And so there's a lot of room there to maneuver around financing. Um, and, uh, and so that's what we're doing. We're now working through that as part of this whole closing process. Absolutely. And one, one quick question on, um, on, on the news that the company announced yesterday. I have to ask because I, it's a little different. I don't see a lot of these press releases very often about uh, reports uh, and ongoing investigation to potentially improper and illegal trading activity in the company's common stock. Can you explain, just tell our audience and maybe some folks that are listening in better understand, you know, what this means and why the company uh, also put this news out there? Yeah, I mean, it, we as officers and directors have an obligation to ensure uh, that the full value of, of the company's equity is delivered to shareholders. And, and we noticed that there was tremendous trading volume, especially last year. And when you think about in, in absolute terms, when you think about how many shares are outstanding in the company's flow, and you extrapolate that against the amount of volume of purchases, people buying the stock, it didn't seem to align. And so because of that, we thought, well, let's understand what is going on. We started with conversations with NASDAQ saying, help us understand, this doesn't seem to make sense to us. In the end, they really couldn't give us anything that, that we as a, as a company felt comfortable with. So we took it to the next level and said, okay, well, let's, let's see if we can get some more empirical evidence to see what's going on. 
to make sure that the market is operating truthfully or honestly, transparently. And what we discovered was that there was a fairly large uh, imbalance between uh, shares purchased and shares delivered. And when that happens, it tells you somebody's playing games. I mean, in absolute terms, there should be a buyer and a seller in one share exchange between them. When you have an imbalance, it means there are more shares on offer than there are actually available that have been purchased. Sure. So that tells you something's not right. So uh, for us, it's more about our duty to make sure that we're monitoring it. Now we, we let the market know that we are watching. Hopefully that discourages people from playing games. Um, and it's something we'll keep a, an eye on as we move forward, because we want to make sure that, you know, as we uh, deliver on our business plan, that shareholders are, are, are uh, rewarded properly and, and not disadvantaged by, um, call it illegal trading, for lack of a better descriptor. For sure. And also, I mean, look, just speaking frankly as well, I mean, you know, part of your growth strategy is acquisition. You already said that you're going to need to raise capital. So, if the, you know, if some of these, you know, whatever this is, uh, shenanigans, whatever it is, you know, are happening and artificially taking the price lower, you know, exactly. that is yeah. that also part of the thought process as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. We want to see the shareholders get fair value. And, uh, and it, it, as we've come to learn more, this is not a, a problem uh, that only we are facing. This is, seems to be quite prevalent in small cap stocks, even in larger cap stocks as well. So, uh, you know, again, I'm certainly not an expert, but as I do talk to the experts, I'm, I'm shocked or appalled to see uh, the, the extent of the problem. For sure. All right. Well, Close this out real quick. You know, um, we talked about in our last interview uh, towards the end about some of your goals and 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 uh, milestones that you'd like to achieve in 2023. So, from what you can tell us, can you give us a quick wrap on some of the other things that you're hoping to accomplish for this year? Well, I think, uh, like I said, we do, we continue to move forward on our acquisition strategy. That's key and integral to what we're doing. Um, I'd like to say we're kind of trying to thread the needle around the things that we have announced and that are in the process of closing by really looking at a smart way to finance and do it in a way where shareholders are able to maximize the amount of equity that uh, uh, value that we have. So um, it, it's, you know, focus on that and, and pulling that off. And I think you'll see more announcements as we move forward that hopefully will sort of help the market understand how we're going about doing this. Um, and then equally on the organic side of the business, you know, unthink is a critically important uh, IP. Um, and we're really looking forward to seeing what the consumer uptake is, as that starts to evolve. And, uh, you know, I've said to the team, I have this feeling that this is a product that is going to fly off the shelves and, and we're going to be challenged with funding how fast it's growing. And that's a nice problem to have. Um, but that's that's certainly an area of focus. And, and we think Berry People fits into that strategy of distribution and nutrition uh, really well. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Ingo, with that, where can our audience go and find more information on AgriForce? Well, I just encourage you to go to our website and uh, obviously um, keep an eye on announcements. Uh, like I said, I think we'll have uh, quite an exciting to story story to tell this year. And uh, between the two, you should be well informed. Very good. Well, Ingo, thank you so much for joining me today. Really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And I look forward to our next update. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. Take care.